Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson on finding volume of prisms and cylinders. Today we're going to have a few different goals. Our first goal is to actually um, identify our most specific name for prisms. Um, and then we're going to talk about how we actually derive the formula for prisms and cylinders. And then we're going to end today's lesson by actually doing some problems where we, we use the formula to solve for volume. All right, so let's get started. Part one, we're going to be talking about classifying prisms. We're really heading into three-dimensional shapes now. So if we take a look here in our first dimension, right, um, when we talk about first dimension, we're talking about points and lines, all right? When we move to the second dimension, we're looking at shapes that have two different dimensions. So that's like a length and a width or a base and a height, right? Think about all of those two-dimensional polygons we talked about, and all of those have two dimensions. Now we head into the third dimension, which is what we're focusing on today. We're looking at shapes that are extending into the third dimension. So that might mean a length, a width, and maybe a height or a depth, right? So really focusing on talking about three-dimensional prisms right now. So before we begin, let's talk about what is a prism. Well, a prism is a three-dimensional solid that has a few really special features. All right, so in your notes, you're going to copy this down. A prism is a three-dimensional solid that has two congruent, remember congruent means equal or equivalent, right, and parallel polygon bases. Two congruent and parallel polygon bases. We're going to talk about what that means in a second. From sixth grade, you should remember what a base is, all right? But we're going to talk about how we can look for those two congruent and parallel, parallel polygon bases. The second feature of a prism is that those bases are connected by rectangular sides. So let's take a look over here on the bottom. Um, and we're just going to use this color here. And we're going to ask ourselves, are these shapes prisms or not a prism? All right, well, in this first example here to the left, I'm going to let me use number one. We're going to look at this. This has a base that's a, well, a rectangle, right? I cannot find another parallel base to that. So this is not a prism. I look at number two. My base here is a triangle. Can I find another congruent and parallel triangle in this shape? Yeah, right up here, right? Now I'm going to check, okay, well, does it have rectangular sides? Yep, it sure does. So this is a prism, okay? Oops, sorry, having some difficult technical difficulties over here. Now I look here. Now in this shape here, I have a base, but is a circle a polygon? No, right? Even though I have a congruent and parallel circle on the other side of this shape, it's also not connected by rectangular sides. So this is not a prism. All right, I look here on the bottom to the left. All right, I've got a rectangle on the bottom. I've got a rectangle on top. Are these two congruent parallel bases? No, right? That bottom one's a lot bigger than that top one. So this is not a prism. I'm gonna look here. All right, we've got a rectangle. Can I find another congruent and parallel polygon base? Yeah, right up here, right? And it's connected by rectangles. All the sides are rectangles. So this is a prism. Over here, the last one image here, I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna say, is there two congruent and parallel polygon bases? Now, a lot of times students automatically look at the bottom and say, that's your base. But we really have to get out of the habit of always saying the base is the bottom. Now, if I kind of look, these are the same exact images here. I've just rotated that shape. So I'm really looking to see, can I find two shapes, two two-dimensional polygons that are parallel and exactly the same or congruent? And we do have that here, right? We've got a triangle to the left and a triangle to the right. Now I'm going to look at those sides. Are they connected by rectangles? They are, right? So this is also a prism. I know this looks a little messy. I'm sorry about that. Um, so we're coming back to this main picture here. We've got three prisms here. Okay, and those are the ones with the little check mark next to it. Those are prisms. Now that we know what a prism is, let's talk about how we classify them. How do we name it? Well, to classify a prism, we actually name the shape of the base. So we're going to go through pretty quickly here to actually name these prisms by its most specific name. Now, all the way to the left here, I look at my base, and I know I've highlighted some of them as the bottom, but remember, our base is just two congruent and parallel polygons. So over here, my base here is a square. So I can call this a square prism. But square prisms have a more specific name. Do you think you know it? Correct, it's a cube. 
All right, so I'll accept either of these names for it. That's supposed to be a parentheses, I apologize. Okay, that's a little messy, sorry about that. All right, the next shape here, I'm gonna look for that was two congruent and parallel polygon bases. Are you getting tired of me saying that over and over again? All right, so I have here a rectangle on the bottom, rectangle on top. Those are my parallel bases. And since they're both rectangles, I call this a rectangular prism. Hopefully this is nice and easy for you so far. Let's move to the third example. Look for that base. See if you can find another polygon that's exactly the same that's parallel to it. Good, we have a triangular prism. All right, let's kick it up a notch. Let's look at this fourth example. Now the base here is what shape? Good, I hope you notice it's a pentagon. All right, we've got a pentagon in the front and a pentagon in the back. Remember, our base is not always the bottom and they're connected by all these rectangles here. So I'm gonna call this a pentagonal prism. I hope you're following along with me as you're copying your notes. All right, and the last and final shape here, can you identify what's the base of this prism? Good, it's a hexagon. We've got one hexagon in the front and one hexagon in the back, okay? And those are connected by those rectangular sides. So we call this a hexagonal prism. All right, beautiful. So we've talked about what is a prism, what are features of a prism, and we talked about how to classify it. So let's move on to part two of our lesson. Part two is all about finding volume. Now you should have learned about what volume is, all right? And we're not talking about like the volume of like listening to music, right? We're talking about volume and geometry. Now in these two pictures here, I like to show this visual because when we talk about volume, we're talking about the number of little tiny cubes needed to fill a three-dimensional shape. Now these are great pictures to show how we're filling it, but you should see that we've got a lot of missing space um, in this picture here, right? We've got some like just wide open spaces. So when we talk about finding volume, we need to use a formula because we can't approximate what part of that cube is used to fill up that little space. All right. So when we talk about volume, volume is the amount of cubic units needed to fill a three dimensional solid. Now on the right here, I have a nice little picture of a perfect little tiny cube. A cubic unit is a one by one by one unit cube. Now in this image here, I have a one cubic centimeter. Okay, I'm showing one cubic centimeter because each side length is one centimeter long. Think about how small that is, all right? Now, when we talk about volume, I like to imagine kind of like almost like a pastry box, like what we have shown here. And we're trying to take all of those little tiny cubes and fill it up. Now, if we're trying to fill up that perfect box, that rectangular prism in this case, all right, let's take a look at some of these images on the bottom. In image A, we kind of have the empty box. Now to figure out volume, I like to imagine that we first find the area of that bottom part. We kind of cover up that bottom, right? And that's what image C is showing us. We cover a perfect layer of all those little tiny cubes. And then we just start stacking them up and up and up until we reach the brim of my prism. We've reached the top or we've reached that height. And that shows us a perfect volume, the number of cubic units needed to fill up that three-dimensional solid. All right, so with that said, there is a general formula for finding volume of every prism. Now you might know the volume for certain prisms, but I don't want you to memorize each of them. I just want you to know this one general formula. So the general formula for volume of a prism, and this is where notations come into play a lot, so really be careful when you're copying down your notes here. The general formula for volume of a prism is capital V, which represents volume, is equal to, and I'm gonna use two different colors here. If you have two different colors, please do that too. All right, capital B times lowercase h. Now let's talk about what those means. For the first time, we're dealing with some capital letters inside of our formula here. This capital B represents the area of the base. Now once we find the area of the base, all we're doing is continuously stacking, stacking that shape up until we reach the height. So this H represents the height of the prism. All right, take a moment to kind of write that down, labeling each of those, making sure you're capitalizing the B, 
lowercase in the H because that's a dimension. All right, so let's actually apply that. What we have here on the bottom are three examples. These are not on your notes, but we're going to actually go through how we can take this general formula now and apply it to any prism. All right, so I'm going to kind of use those different colors again. So we have, in this case, we have a rectangular prism. All right, and I know it's a rectangular prism because my base is a rectangle. So to find the volume of this rectangular prism, I'm going to start with my general formula. Volume equals area of the base times the height. Capital B for area of the base. We're going to replace the capital B with the formula for this shape here of the base, which is a rectangle. Well, if you remember from our last lessons, right, the shape, the area formula for a rectangle is length times width. And then we're going to multiply it by the height of my prism. All right. So there we have it, the formula for volume of a rectangular prism. All right, now let's move to the next one. Once again, we've got a prism. We know the general formula for any prism is volume equals area of the base times the height, or capital B times lowercase h. All right, I'm going to use this green to highlight my base here, which in this case is a what? Go to square. We have a square prism or a cube here. So I'm going to replace this capital B with the formula for area of a square, which is s squared. I'm going to multiply it by my height of the prism. Okay, which is H, so I'm going to bring that down. So I can leave it like this, or if you really want to be special, um, if you want to be a little fancier, I mean, we know the height of a cube is the same dimensions as its side, so we can actually say S cubed. All right, both of these work for volume of a cube. All right, let's get to the last example here. This is where students always kind of make a little mistake, so this is a tough one. So I'm going to start off with the general formula, volume equals area of the base times the height. I ask myself, what type of prism is this? Classifying the prism really helps here. Good, I hope you notice that this is a triangular prism. Remember, our base is not always on the bottom. It's wherever the parallel and congruent polygon bases are. So this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to replace that capital B with the formula for area of one triangle. So in parentheses, I'm going to write 1 half base times height. And I'm going to use a subscript T here to represent the height of this triangle. All right. But to find the volume, I have to fill that up. I have to multiply by the height of my prism. So I write H, and I use a lowercase subscript P here. Okay. And there we have it. The volume of a triangular prism. All right, that was a lot at once. Let's generalize this again. Remember, the only thing we really need to remember here is this volume formula for a prism. All right, let's move on. Sorry, this page looks a little bit of a mess, okay? All right, let's look. So we have the formula for volume of a prism, all right? Oh, and I forgot to say here, if we go back to this picture here, um, I love to use this image of, imagine you have one piece of computer paper, printer paper, right? That's our base. And if we continue to stack that base up and up and up and up, we create a rectangular prism. So that's really what you're doing every time when you're finding a volume of a prism. Start with the base, continuously stacking that paper up or stacking that base up until you get to the height of that prism. All right, so we can use that same idea with the cylinder, right? Well, I can you still use that general formula, volume equals area of the base times the height. Let's talk about what I mean by that. If we imagine a stack of CDs that I have in this picture here, Hopefully you know what a CD is, okay? <laughs> um, but if we have a stack of CDs, we're going to put one CD into this case first. And if we want to fill up this cylindrical case, we're going to continuously stack our CDs up to the height. So we're kind of using that same exact general formula. We're starting off with the area of the base, which in this case is a what? Go to circle. So I'm going to replace my capital B with the area of my base, which is a circle. Well, what's the formula for area of a circle? Good, pi r squared. All right, and then I'm going to multiply it by the height of my prism. Essentially what we're doing, and I'm going to try my best to draw this, is we're taking that base, which is a circle, and then we are stacking those circles up and up and up until we've reached the height of our cylinder here. 
all right? So I'm going to replace that capital H with that height of the cylinder. And what we have here is the volume of a cylinder, all right? Now, you don't need those parentheses around the pi r squared, but I know some students like to break that up so they know that that's what they're indicating as the area of the base, all right? So we have the general formula for the volume of any prism. We have the general formula for volume of a cylinder, okay? And now we're going to try some practice problems. So hopefully these images helped you a little bit. Okay, before we begin, I want to talk about some helpful steps because these are kind of talking a little bit about my expectations for your work too. The first thing I really want us to practice is classifying the shape by its most specific name. This is really going to help you identify the base and it's also going to really help you create that formula. I do not want you to sit there and memorize all these different formulas. Every formula leans on this general formula for volume. Volume equals area of the base times the height. So the next step you're going to do is to use that general formula. And I want to see you replacing that capital B with the area formula for the base. All right. And if you need to use that formula sheet from our last half of our unit, then four, five, and six, usual, right? Fill in the dimensions, complete your computations, label and circle your final solution. So we're going to do our first example together. In example number one, I look and I see, okay, this definitely looks like a prism. I have to identify my base here. So I look for those parallel and congruent polygons. In this case, it might look like a rectangle, but I noticed the dimensions are eight by eight. So I have a square prism, or in other words, a cube, all right? From here, what I'm going to do is start off with my general formula. Just like number one, number two says, right? Volume goes area of the base times the height. Now I'm going to look and ask myself, oh, what's the shape of my base? Well, what's nice about this is we kind of identify that when we name the shape. So the shape of my base is a square. So I'm going to replace this capital B with S squared. I'm going to multiply it by the height of my prism, which is H. All right. Know a lot of different colors going on. I just like to separate that, though. All right, from here, we're going to start filling in our dimensions, and that's step four. So I'm going to replace my side length of my base, so looking at the green, that's 8 squared times the height of my prism is 8. All right, go ahead and calculate that out. 8 times 8 times 8. We get the answer of 512. Now we have to label it. Remember, we're talking about volume. I'm asking us how many of those little tiny cubes, I'm going to try my best to draw one cube here, is being used to fill up this shape, okay? That was a terrible picture, so I'm just going to try to just stop right there, okay? So volume equals 512, in this case, cubic centimeters, all right? So it's um, 512 of those little, little tiny cubes that we talked about in the beginning of class, or this video. All right, let's move to number two. Number two is a little tricky. We start off by classifying the shape by its most specific name. What shape are we dealing with here? What prism? Good, hopefully you didn't fall into my trap. If you said rectangular prism, you fell into my trap. All right, when we talk about this shape, we're looking for two parallel, oops, sorry about that, two parallel and congruent polygons. So that's the triangles here. All right, get out of that habit of looking at the base as the bottom. So this is what we call a triangular prism. We're going to start off with our general formula. Volume equals area of the base times the height. I'm going to pay attention to my base, which in this case is a triangle. The formula for area of a triangle is what? Good. One half base times height. Now remember, we've got two H's going on here, so I'm gonna use a little sub subscript H, I mean subscript T, to represent the height of the triangle. Now I'm gonna multiply that by the height of the prism, okay, which in this case is that nine feet. Imagine this shape being kind of rotated towards us and that nine feet, right, if I kind of draw that as best as I can, if I kind of rotated this shape and made the triangles the bottom, all right, now you can kind of see, hopefully. That 
that if we rotate it towards us, okay, um, you'd have that nine feet as the height here. All right, so now we have the formula. Great job. We're gonna start filling in the dimensions. I'm gonna bring down my one half. I'm focusing on what's in green, which is my base, okay? The base of my triangle is eight feet. The height of my triangle is this line here, and that's six feet. Now I'm gonna look for the height of my prism. That's nine feet. Once we fill in the dimensions, we're gonna start solving. So I'm gonna try to do as much as I can mentally. Half of eight is four. Four times six is 24. And then we're gonna just do 24 times nine, which gives me 216, and this feet, in this case, cubic feet. I know we write it as feet cubed, but we say it as cubic feet. All right, great job. Hopefully those two examples helped. Let's move on to three and four now. In number three, we start off once again, same expectations, classify this shape by its most specific name. What shape are we dealing with in number three? Good, a rectangular prism. All right, now I'm gonna start by writing out my general formula. Volume equals area of the base times the height, capital B times lowercase h. I start off by identifying the shape of my base. And this is where if the different colors help you, highlight the shape of that base. We're dealing with a rectangle here, right? So I'm going to replace that capital B with the formula for area of a rectangle, which is length times width. Okay, notice I'm using lowercase letters now. All right, now I have to multiply that because what we're doing here is we're taking that rectangle, right, and we're just stacking it up to fill up that prism. All right, so we're taking that bottom rectangle and then starting to stack it. Well, in this case, my height here of my prism is... Four. Okay, so I'm going to bring down that H, my volume equals to. All right, so let's start filling in the dimensions here. Volume is equal to, I'm going to first look at the length and the width of my base, which is a rectangle. The length is 10, the width is 3. I multiply by the height of the prism, which we identified in orange, is 4. Beautiful. We kind of multiply all that together. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 times 4 is 120. And then we label this, remember, as cubic inches and what that means is we have a little tiny cube here I'm sorry that's one inch by one inch sorry that was really messy and what we're doing here is we're taking all these little tiny cubes and filling up that um, that rectangular prism all right, our last example for today. In number four, we're going to start by classifying the shape by its most specific name. Now, number four, remember, is special. It's not a prism because um, circles are not polygon bases, right? We just have a shape as a base. We have a circle as a base. And it's obviously not um, connected by rectangular sides. So number four is a cylinder. We don't say, like, a circle prism, right? It's just called a cylinder. All right, we're going to start off with our general formula again. Volume equals area of the base times the height. I start off by looking at what shape is my base. Well, in this case, nice and easy, right? My shape is a circle. What's the formula for area of a circle? Good, pi r squared. So I'm going to replace that capital B with pi r squared. I'm going to multiply it by the height of my cylinder. So I always start off with that formula first, okay? So we kind of have two sets of lines of formulas, right? Now we're going to start filling in some information. That pi is 3.14. What's the radius of my base here? All right, well, this 12 feet represents my diameter, so my radius must be 6 feet. That little symbol there, that apostrophe, represents feet. Notice I put that 2 on the outside. That 2 belongs to the base of 6, just to that radius. Now I multiply by the height of my prism which in this case, sorry, not the height of my prism, the height of my cylinder, which is 20. All right, once we fill in dimensions, we can just do some computations. So you can go ahead and grab your calculator. I'm going to calculate it on mine while you calculate it on yours. And we get the final answer of volume equals 2,260.8 cubic feet.
that is a huge cylinder, right? Thinking about that, all of these massive cubes, it's a terrible drawing again, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> all right, um, and each side length is one foot by one foot and we're using that to fill that up, fill up that cylinder. And that's 2,260 of them. All right, that's a massive cylinder. All right, with that said, We've just done four examples. I want you to try out these four on your notes. That's your only practice for today. But I am expecting a few things. I'm looking to see if you can classify the shape by its most specific name. If you can kind of write both formulas out for now. I know that's a little tedious, but start off with volume equals area of the base times the height. And then kind of create your formula for that specific prism or cylinder. And then making sure you're labeling and circling your final solution. Really important here. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped. After you finish those four examples, try to look in your pantry, see if you can find some snacks that are cylinders or um, prisms. All right, and I have some really good examples here. Apparently none of these are healthy snacks, so I apologize. But thinking about Oreos, what shapes did that, that create as you start stacking that up, right? Uh, well, that's perfect, right? That's like our cylinder. We got the shape of our base, and we stack it up to create the height. Our Toblerone bar, I don't know if you guys have ever had this, these are delicious, but we start off with that triangle and we start to stack all of those little pieces up, all right, until it fills up that shape. All right, so my height is almost this way. I love this marshmallow. We start off with that bottom and we kind of raise it up for the height. And these little wafer bars, these are rectangular prisms, okay? So if you have time, look in your pantry, see if you guys can find some good snacks that are um, examples of prisms or cylinders. Thanks for watching today's lesson.